I'm Megan for Now in Android, your ongoing guide to what's new and notable in the world of Android development. In this episode, we discuss Android 16, the developer preview for a new desktop experience on connected displays, adaptive apps, new Android X libraries, and much more. Let's dive in. First up, Android 16 is officially here. It's rolling out to supported Pixel devices, and the source code is live on the Android Open Source Project. This release is packed with updates. For media, you'll find enhanced camera APIs for pro users with night mode scene detection plus improved Ultra HDR support with HEIC encoding. For UI, there's a new embedded photo picker and system animations for back to home and cross task are now enabled by default, creating a more fluid experience. There's a new progress style notification for progress centric notifications. And for graphics, you can now create custom AGSL effects and runtime color filter and runtime X effort mode. On the performance side, the System Health Manager API gives you GPU and CPU resource estimates, and ART gets a compatibility mode for 16 KB page sizes. As always, be sure to test your apps for compatibility, even if you aren't targeting Android 16 yet. We just released the Android 16 Q3 Beta 2 to the Beta channel, where you can try out a developer preview of desktop windowing experiences on connected devices. By connecting a compatible Android phone to an external display, you can launch a full desktop session that operates independently from your phone. You get true multitasking with multiple resizable app windows and can even set up multiple desktop sessions. Make sure your app is designed for any window size and can handle display changes and external peripherals. That desktop experience perfectly ties into the biggest theme of this release cycle, building excellent adaptive apps. With Android 16, apps targeting the new SDK will be resizable by default on large screens. Note that this is no longer optional. It's essential for providing a great user experience on foldables, tablets, and Chromebooks. At Google I.O., we presented Jetpack Compose Adaptive Libraries and a new Navigation 3 library that will empower you to build a single adaptive layout. Our advice is to start now. Test your app on large screens, fix common UI issues, and optimize screen by screen. With apps running on so many different screens and form factors, scalable and automated testing is more critical than ever. Check out the tools and patterns for scalable Android app testing video for some helpful patterns and tools around automated testing. You can use RoboElectric to speed up Compose and Espresso tests by running them on the JVM. You can use Device Configuration Override to emulate different window sizes without needing physical devices for every form factor. And to manage test execution and reliability, you can use Gradle Manage Devices which lets you define emulators, run tests in parallel, and even use snapshots for clean device states. Finally, we've got some fun new stuff in Android Jetpack. First, the new photo picker library further simplifies integration of the embedded photo picker, making the photo picker appear to be part of your app, with both view and compose components ready to go. Next, there's a new lifecycle view model navigation three integration. This ensures each nav entry gets its own view model store owner, making it much easier to properly scope and manage view models with the Navigation 3 library. And finally, the Emoji 2 library has been updated to support Emoji 16.0. And that's a wrap for this episode. From the launch of Android 16 to the future of desktop experiences and adaptive apps, there's so much to start building with. Check out all the links in the description below for deep dives into every topic we covered. Remember to like, subscribe, and share. Come back soon for the latest updates from the Android developer universe.